Better unmute myself. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is One Day Today. We are on episode 123. So glad to have you with us. And I'm excited to introduce our guest with you in just a moment. Her name is Chris Miller, and I'm really excited for you all to meet her. But starting out, hello. I hope you're well this week. You know, when we started this platform, you know, this stage, you know, we share this story a lot, but, it, you know, it, this is before the whole pandemic and the whole, you know, experience of the world kind of flipping on its head. You know, I think like many of you, my experience was, I have plans, now what do I do? <laughs> you know, originally this was gonna be a live event. You're we gonna have a, a big, you know, festival in Nashville and then the pandemic happened. And we started this virtual stage because we knew we still wanted to have a platform for people who have just stories that light the world up. People who have overcome, you know, just the biggest trials and traumas and tribulations, you know, similar to what I've dealt with or what you may be dealing with right now, still in your life. And, you know, you know, in this process that we start, as we started this stage and we've had people share, you know, people from all over the world, people of every creed, every color, religion, sexuality, you know, every distinction of, you know, humanity, we've had people share their stories and, you know, one common theme, one commonality that, you know, that keeps presenting itself is on the other side of our trauma lies wisdom on the other side of, you know, the fears, the, the, the scary lonesome times in our lives are actually on the other side of those are actually opportunities to see ourselves in the world as something beyond what we ever imagined you know on the other side of you know the the suffering and the and the trauma and the fear there's there's something that you know we have to offer from what we've experienced ourselves to others you know the the, the mountains and valleys of life you know for me going from a kid who picked on and bullied for being fat and, you know, half, you know, half Jewish quarter black Italian kid, you know, didn't know his place, you know, I went from I don't belong and the world is dismissive to we all belong, we all have something unique and beautiful to share. And that's, you know, that's one of my gifts. And one of my callings is to, you know, hold up the, the stories and the voices of people who have overcome something in their lives, but on, on the other side of that, they found something beautiful that they have uniquely to share with you and with the world. And I'm always excited to just to have a new person share because it's everybody, if you know, and it's like, if you can listen to the world this way, you know, if you know, every single person has a gift, you know, and if, and if one person in the world has one gift to share, that's, that's over 7 billion gifts. And I would assert that you all and we all have more than one thing to share, but I think it comes from a space of being vulnerable and authentic just sharing the scary parts that we've overcome. It gives others courage to do the same. So I'm really excited to introduce and welcome our guest today. Please welcome to the stage, Chris Miller. Hey, thank you. Honored to be here. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to have you. If you're, if you're ready to jump in it, Chris, the yeah. stage is yours. All right. Well, you really put it you know, some of these stories and sharing the things that were the hardest things in life and from the high to the low really comes down to everything is a blessing. And if you can count your blessings and stay in gratitude, gives you a different attitude, which gives you a latitude, which rises you above the norm, right? So, I, you know, condense a bunch of decades of my life into a story back in the roaring 60s, there was, a, there was a trend going on where people were seeking God. I was in college and I wanted to know God more than anything. That was my, that was what I wanted. You know, I looked at go to school, get married, have kids and die. It just didn't seem like enough for me, honestly. So, you know, I studied all kinds of religions. I was actually born Jewish and, and but it wasn't, I didn't come find the completion there. And I ended up running into these people that were walking around in a white robe and their bare feet. They were living like the disciples 2,000 years ago. And back in those days, we used to be able to travel freely on the road. People, there were a lot of people hitchhiking. You go on on-ramp, there'd be like 15 people there on the on-ramp. It was a lot of movement during that time. And these folks, they literally lived the life of Christ. Nonviolent, no killing, vegan right? Lived as brothers and sisters and didn't work for money or materialism. 
So what it did was it kicked me out of the world. It kicked me out of the identification of this is who I am into, into the spirit. And so it was an amazing experience. We lived nomadic. We went north in the summer and south in the winter. We split up in twos and threes. And back then we took our ID. We cut our ID, threw our driver's license away. We didn't want to identify to anything in this world. So we really, really went out there and didn't know where we would be tomorrow. And, and, what, tr and it, what it did was it caused us to trust in the spirit and hear intuitively where to go. Right. So we'd go into a town and you're like, go right, go left. And you'd run into someone that that had seen you in a dream. Like I saw you guys in a dream. And then I'd open my mouth and words would come out of me that I had never even heard before. I never read the Bible, really. Right. And things would come out of me that was like I was listening to. Right. It was amazing. Amazing. I lived that way about 15 years. Mm -hmm. I went down in the Central America, brothers and sisters went all over the world and very, very blessed time. And I mean, mountaintop. Well, that's what, he, you know, we begin with, right? The mountaintop and the highs and the lows. So during this time, I was blessed and I, we would gather together and it wasn't something that we planned. We didn't have a cell phone to text people. None of that was happening. This is back when there were pay phones, right? I don't know if you even remember those, but there was, was no outside communication. It cost us to go inside to trust the spirit. And we all end up by the river, down by the Colorado River in the winter. We went north in the summer, south in the winter, and followed the birds. And we'd, we'd sit around the campfire. And sometimes, we, well, what happened to me was I ended up walking out in the middle of the desert and songs would download. I was downloading like five, eight songs a day. I really didn't understand what was happening. It was just a whole complete song would come through with the lyrics, right? The song, the tune, the everything. We started singing around the campfire and all of a sudden God said, go to Hollywood and make a record. Like what? Okay. Well, I didn't really, was. I really wasn't receptive to that. I had always wanted to do that, but I didn't, I was a little scared. And after a year of the spirit knocking on me to go, 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 seven sisters, we went to Hollywood, white robe, bare feet. We walked, knocked on all the record label doors and we sang on the spot. We got a record deal and we ended up cutting a record. It was called a day of pure righteousness. And we, you know, everything was going our way, right? Someone gave us a mansion to live in, gave us a van to drive around in. Now, remember, we didn't have anything. And now all of a sudden, everything was starting to shift a little bit. What happened to me, and here's, here's what happened, is the ego monster came and got me. And I started doing things. It was a real subtle change. But I started taking all the credit myself. Stop giving glory to God. I thought I was so cool. All these songs came through me and I got this choir because we sang a cappella. There were no instruments. It was all a cappella. It was really, really very good. We all did different instruments. And well, I got an ego trip. And you know, what happens in Hollywood is what happens in Hollywood. There's lots of drugs and alcohol and and because I had put the robe on around 17, almost 18 years old. I had no experience with any of that. I never had, you know, I never did drugs or got into any of that stuff. Well, there I was doing the alcohol and the drug thing. And the next thing I know, my white robe came off of me and my voice was removed. I lost the record deal. I ended up homeless. I lost my friends. Pretty much my family disowned me. Nobody wanted to have anything to do with me. And I got stuck on drugs. I, I had such an ego. Because of that mountaintop experience, thinking that I was so spiritual that I was like, I could do anything. I could stop whenever I wanted to, but I couldn't. I couldn't stop. And then that went on for years. I got arrested, got put on probation. Then I got arrested again. Then I went to jail, got arrested again. I ended up in prison. That's right. Because I couldn't stop the drugs. It's a different world now. They're legal in a lot of the states seriously. But back then they were not legal. And my mindset crashed. My voice, like I said, was removed for 10 years. I couldn't even smile. It was pretty rugged living out on the streets, looking in the dumpsters for food. Believe it or not, that's where I was. 
And I tell you, I, had, I ended up in prison. And when we drove into prison, we're in that, you know, the chain gang and this bus. And I looked out the window. Oh, my gosh. I looked around. And I went, I went, I was like, no, we're in the wrong place. This is the wrong place. This is CIW, California Institute for Women in California. I looked around and I'm like, these people, I think we're in the men's prison. We're in the wrong place. I mean, these ladies look like dudes. It was like very scary. Here you go. You're getting dropped off. You're all chained in this chain gang. This is for drugs, right? Like I'd been a, you know, a murderer or something. And I ended up in prison. And because I was, you know, a nonviolent offender, I ended up being going to fire camp and I fought fires. And this is where my life changed because when I saw what a jerk I was and how I just abused all the gifts that I'd been given and really vain and egotistical, stopped giving God the glory and my voice was removed so I couldn't do anything about it anyway. That's when I had my come to Jesus moment. Man, I hit my knees. And here's what happened. as In the fire camp, we're the cleanup crew. So we go behind the fires. And when the fires are going, the, those people you see with in the orange jump shoots, <laughs> right? We're, we have shovels and rakes and hose. And we go in, we clean off all the hot spots or trees that are still on fire and we get cut them down. That was our job. It was, it was so intense. But what happened to me is I looked down and I had this flashback because I was one minute I looked down and was like in my bare feet. The next minute I looked down and it was like, I had these big black fire boots, right? Leather, right? And it was kind of shocking because when I was in the robe, I was so nonviolent into no killing, you know, being vegan, not for health, but it was for nonviolence. I didn't even wear leather, but life changed. And there I was, and it was catastrophic. And it pushed me into, if there's a God, please show me a sign. Right. And so my life changed after that. I started studying law when I was doing time, became a paralegal and I got out and I decided, you know what? I am not going to go back to what I was doing. I'm not going to go back to drugs. I really wanted to start a new life. So I got out, became a paralegal, started helping people with living trust. Now, this is 30 years ago. So back then people was like, Living trust. Well, just to let you know, living trust is like a legal document that keeps you out of courts when you go to heaven. Hopefully you go to heaven. Keeps your assets out of probate. Probates courts that take attorneys and attorneys take money from your state, like five to 25 percent. And what happened was I saw these little senior people that had assets and they were going to probate and losing everything they had. It was very sad. So I decided, you know, I'm going to I'm going to help people. So I came into this world from that mountaintop experience. So my mindset's different. <laughs> See me blinking in and blinking out because it's kind of like a spirit thing in this world. <laughs> so the video kind of images that. But when I did that, my way that I entered into this world was a lot different. So I was working with an attorney one day and we were sitting there with a little lady and all she had was a car and a house. And this guy was going to make her living trust. This is 1991. And she didn't have any money. And he was going to charge her $5,000 for a trust. I go, are you kidding me? So I looked at him. I said, hey, real nice. You know, can you give her a deal? And he looked at me so cold as ice and said, no. And that kicked me in the gut. And I was like, I am out of here. I'm done. That's not the way I'm going to live my life. And that projected me into my business, Trust Unlimited. And that's a document preparation service. So I started creating living trusts for people. Actually, to this day, I've created over 6,000 living trusts. Never had one problem. Got very blessed. Because what I did was I decided to make it easy for the average person to get these. Now, this is 91, 92. I started charging $199 for the same $5,000 trust as a paralegal. Ooh, those attorneys were mad. Now, I was walking in a gray area because I'm not practicing law. But back then, even if you talked about it, it was considered practicing law. But there was a trend happening paralegals were leaving the model of you have to be under an attorney and opening up a lot of their own practices. So what happened as a result of that, 
they created a designation for me called an LDA, so I'm a legal document assistant, which was just a way that the, the state could get more fees for bonding and insurance and all of those things. But what happened for me was during this time, in my 30 years of in practice of doing living trust, I saw a pattern. Now, it's not that I was so smart. 30 years is a lot of time. 6,000, and I stopped counting. There's more than that. Portfolios that I've looked at of people's estates, and they're all different. And what I saw was a pattern. So they'd come to my office in the first 10 years. They were like, everything was great because back in that time, people were living off the interest rates of the inflation. They'd have $100,000 in the bank. And, and back then it was like 15% inflation. Get ready. We're going there. And they were living off the inflation. But it's not going to be the same kind of inflation. This one is very bad. This whole thing is very bad for people. It's going to be the worst. It's going to be worse than 2008. And I'm an optimist, but I have to study this. That's another topic. But the point was there were patterns. And the patterns were that people got stuck. And there were three things that I wrote in my number one best-selling book, Three Secrets for Safe Money in a Fabulous Future, was the tagline, was the first 10 years was great. Then in the end of the 90s, there was a crash. And what happened was that people lost their money. And what I realized when I studied was that the way that the market and the plans are set up, I saw most people lose their estate in the end of their life, either in probate, nursing homes, or the Great Depression. And so as a result of this, I learned about safe money. So another thing I can proudly talk about is that I've never lost one dime in any market risk. So I'm on the safe money side. Now, as this progresses, that's my business. My business formed out of my heart to helping people. And I'm still that way. And I, um, I really like to empower people and shift their mind around money. Money's just energy. You don't have to be scared of it. If you don't have it, you don't have to judge yourself because you don't have it. Or if you have a lot, don't go on an ego trip because it could be gone tomorrow. It's really in one way meaningless to real reality. But we're here. So you might as well learn how to take that energy and learn how to have it serve you so that you can do your give back. And what I show people how to do is take their passion and change it into a give back for this time and this season. Because this is really the time where we got to come together and help each other because there's going to be a lot of hard times coming up. This this situation we're in right now is you know, is going to get worse before it gets better. It will get better, but there are things that you need to learn about how to be safe, how to protect your assets, how to protect your food situation, how to set yourself up for success in the world that we're in right now. And it isn't going to go back to the way it was, it never does, but it's just going to, and when you can learn how to keep in that gratitude, keep in the attitude of the gratitude, every day that changes the energy and brings what you want and the beautiful things that you want to come to you. So as a result of all of that, in my spare time, I'm, I'm combining my music because I'm a singer songwriter. I'm a label. I'm on a label out there in Nashville where our sweet host lives. Um, and so I write music and and it's just a wonderful way to connect with people. I think it's a better way than talking because it goes to the heart. So I'm combining music, singing with a lot of the things that I present. But I like to teach the people so that they can be empowered around health, wealth, and peace of mind. So that's a little bit about my life in, in a short thing of of how to overcome some heavy duty things from the mountaintop to prison to, to, you know, pulling up your bootstraps, you know, being homeless, getting a profession, you know, getting out of drugs, getting out of habits, getting out of self doubt, getting out of putting yourself down and learning that you have a gift and you're very special. Everybody's special. And when you learn how to wrap that gift and the healthy money piece, 
then you'll be able to have a fabulous life no matter what happens because it's all the way that you live and think and stay in gratitude. <laughs> wow. That's so it's, um, thank you for sharing all that, Chris. And, you know, like I just acknowledge you for just having such an amazing, like how you, I, just for finding, going through all that from the, from the highest highs to the, the lowest lows, going to prison, going being homeless, you know, and finding for yourself what you have to, to serve others and how you've made a life for yourself. And you're, in essence, you're giving that to others. And uh, there's so many thoughts and questions. I just, I just acknowledge your, your love and your compassion for others and for your, your just commitment to serving others. It's such a, it's a beautiful thing. And, but I have a lot of things I could say and I, I, I hear, but one thank question, you, thank just, you. yeah, of course. The, so one question that came to me, you know, and I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. This is just one that kind of just like popped up for me is, do you think, you know, the light, seeing the light that you've, gone the journey you've had and where you are now do you think without falling as far as you did you'd be able to rise as much as you have now no no i do think that the fall you know the fall is the propulsion to the the leap the quantum leap and i see the pattern daily when i get under attack and all kinds of horrible things like that, you know, so you know you're being under attack and it's so you're grinding through the day. I've changed my mindset to know, hey, I know there's a blessing coming because and it's always that way. When I get an attack, something good's coming. And then I can shift my mindset and go, oh, crap, you know, and curse the day, right? I can shift my set and then I can float through the bumpy time a lot easier that way. So, so there's strategies, right. That you can use right. to outwit the, the carnal mind. Cause you got, you know, you're really two states of mind. You've got your Christ state of mind and you got your human state of mind. Now human is like what it sounds, hue. That's just a hue of what real man is supposed to be like. And man includes women and men. It's There's no sex there. It's spirit. It's not all this BS. It's everybody's talk got lost in this, this looking on the outside. That is a trick. That's a trick to separate us. The reality is spirit of who we are on the inside, right? That's the reality. I love all that you, how you sum that up. And I, so I had a, a kind of, this is, it's coming full circle for me, but I can, you know, I, I grew up, you know, in a pretty secular part of the world, California, you know, my dad's Jewish. My, my grandma was Catholic, but you know, my family didn't give me religion as a practice or, you know, spirituality was, I was always an outsider you know, what's that? You know, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about this book. I don't sure know, you know, I celebrate Hanukkah and Passover was the extent of, right. you know, and like in my own, you know, my journey, you know, you know, especially as like a, you know, I think I was a skeptic for a lot of my life, but at a certain point I became skeptical of my own skepticism. It's like, if I'm so sure about, you know, what I'm so sure about, like what I should know the other side, I should know. And so I like actually had a point in my life where I was exploring, you know, theology, you know, religious studies, scripture, you know, try, just being a sponge. Like I want, I was, essentially I was looking for truth everywhere outside, except actually in, it was, I was just listening and hearing and every, every opinion, especially ones I didn't understand and didn't agree with. But that being said, you know, I, how, how you've internalized, you know, you've internalized this experience of what you've been through that it's regardless of the circumstances you've created a, a structure of for yourself and your life that any ego voice any you know any negative thought can't exist in that you, you've created like it's like a furnace for all those the you know because it's it's not if the ego shows up it's when it does and it's like if it was just a one-time thing it's like i'm just gonna you know i'm i'm gonna be good today and it's like, well, what happens tomorrow when the, you know, you're tempted again by the things that, you know, it's like yeah. success can be your, it can be a, your ego can sneak in and it's from behind. It's, exactly. And it's really tricky because, because it slides 
in there. Now you can't do it. That was what I learned. I couldn't get out of hell myself. It takes yeah. superpower. It you know it takes Almighty God. That's the way it is. And I grew up the same way that you know we you know, Passover and Hanukkah kind of thing, right? Yeah. But but that being said, it you know what I what the way I grew up, it was a lot of self self. You know you know make your mm-hmm. you can't make yourself powerful. You can't think positive positive positive. Oh, I'm beautiful. You know like that affirmation thing. That that'll only take you so far, and then that ends up. That's not enough power because the human race is a lower, it's at a lower frequency. The light was turned down in the fall of man. Man is not living in his potential. His potential is light and everlasting. It's not death and disease. Death and disease is a result of the sin, of the fall, of the consciousness g- turning off. So the pro- the process or the pilgrimage is walking back to God, walking back to the spirit of who you are. You're, you're the son of God. That's who you are, really, you know, or the daughter or whatever. You don't even think in sex. It's a being. It's a state of being. And it's not limited to flesh. But because we're born in the flesh, then we look in the mirror. That's our identity. That's why when we, right. when I took the pilgrimage, you know, like became a monk, we didn't look in mirrors. You know, I didn't fix my hair every day. You know, the identity, you know, it was like being in an inside meditation. So you go inside to find out who you really are. And you can't do it yourself. You can't affirm right. yourself there. You have to plug into the spirit and to life. Yes. I, I love how you explain all of that. And, you know, it's like, I feel like we're conditioned a lot in, in a lot of the culture worldwide to identify with who we are not. Right. And, you know, and, and for me, it was unpacking that and peeling away that onion until there was just nothing left. And it was like, and it's like, who, you know, but while I was saying the whole, like the part of what you're talking about, the fall, like, this is what keeps coming up for me. It's like, you're talking about the fall. And like in that, in the midst of actually studying and reading and listening to lectures on psychology, philosophy, religion, reading scripture and the Bible for the first time, like actually reading it, you know, but what comes up to me is, you know, I mean, regardless of the literal truth, it's just the lesson in some of the stories, like uh, the story of, you know, Adam and Eve, and I won't quote the whole story, but one of the parts is like, there's the tree of, of uh, good and evil, um, or the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And, you know, God said to Eve, not to, or to Adam and Eve, you can do anything here, but don't go to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And to tell a human, like you're saying, a hue, a human, like, don't touch the big red button. (laughs) It's like, and that's our human nature, like, to, it's like, so as soon as we're set, we don't, where someone tells us not to do something, that's why we want to push the red button. Let let me just jump in. Let me just jump in right there that we weren't human at that time we were Mm. divine we were created in light and divinity and there was Mm. no death and there was Mm. no pain of birth childbirth okay and but the what 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 allowed us to push the button was free will we're not robots you don't have to love god you don't have to do that you don't have to be nice you have a free will that that's what distinguishes us differently than all the other creation is that we yeah. have a free will and we can choose. And so I see earth as like a schoolroom to get us back into that light, who we are in spirit, in light, who our real truth reality is. Right. right. Exactly. So that's I the free will it. button. <laughs> right. Yes, it's, it's the free will button. But I see, <laughs> I see it's like when we, when we discover we have a choice, when we, it's like with knowledge, comes the choice to do good or do to do bad like to be grateful or to 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 hide or to or to to love or to fear i mean well i mean aside from the visceral experience of fear but i i see like part of the thing is like it's like running a festival or a race running a race and then and getting to the finish line and realizing you never had to, it's like we never left the garden this <laughs> i guess what it's, it's like we've like maybe our minds drift away, but it's like, we never actually had to go anywhere to, to, to notice that it's all like, you know, whether you call it source, God, the love of the love of God, it's always there, but it's like, are we aligned to receive it? And it's like, are, and I, and I see like this metaphor of like the fall, it's like, 
what falls is the human and it's just the, the it's the experience of rising back to your spirit of who you've always been and not identifying with all these identity things that come up in the world and in trying to look good or avoid looking bad or you know you know it's a real great. simple it's a real simple way to look at it. It's like a consciousness, right? Cause there's only mm -hmm. two. And I just say Christ consciousness and yes. human. Okay. And you're born into this little, you know, your little, you're, it's almost like, you know, when you go scuba diving, you put on the suit. So your body's like your little scuba diving suit on earth, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Here we are in this little school room and, and we have free will and, and by, Plugging into that conscious now, there's a certain way that that, that consciousness lived. There was an example of all loving, forgiving, you know, nonviolent kind of a, you know, do unto others consciousness, a way of being to plug back into that circuit. You can't be a jerk and do all these other things and, and even hear the spirit. So, so there's a progress or a pilgrimage back to how to live on earth in that spirit which is nonviolence, which is loving one another, right? Which is non-materialistic, right? All kinds of that consciousness. Right. I love that. And it's, uh, there's a book or a lecture I heard by Richard Rohr, um, who's a Franciscan friar. I believe he's a friar, but he talks, he talks about Christ consciousness and he talks about, you know, the true self and false self. And uh, something he said after I, I now it's escaping me, but it's so it is so simple when we can see like see the fall in ourselves of actually it's like not it's like the the things that happen to us when we discover there's some even when we find gratitude in the in the scariest of things like you like you how you were in prison how you went to, out of your way to become a paralegal and created your own career it's like you weren't sitting there and say the victim of what was me. This is, uh, you actually transformed your experience of yourself. Like in every day. We well, you had to add your will to it. Right. Yeah. I had to say no more. I'm done. I'm going to do this now. Right. I'm going to push yeah, this. button it. now, Right. So I had to that. take my will and do that and make it right. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, so, exactly. it's, yeah. I, I love it. I mean, for a multitude of reasons, is it's, it's just inspiring that you were able to create that, like from that lowest point, and to actually be such a powerful, amazing person who is a lighthouse for for others to overcome. You know, it's like it just gives so much hope and inspiration to people who say, well, you, "Like, I give up on yeah. themselves." Everybody can, everybody can be this way. It isn't that I'm so special. It's just, yeah. I just got tapped at a young age and I've been around for decades. So, you know, I have a, a, a lot of falls and a lot of, you know, a lot of the down stories that, you know, I could go on for days to tell you about, but we all do. And no one is more special than anyone else, but you do have to make choices and it is a lifestyle. The way that what you eat, what the things that you watch, the what you you know your activities, mm -hmm. and the and when you align them into the spirit, into the way that the spirit lives on earth, and that that example was how Christ was on earth. How did he live? What did he do? That lifestyle is the way that people can live, even in the material world. Like now, I'm not, you know, I I have a business, I'm getting money, but back then I didn't work for money. And I work for love. So, yeah, I make money, but I don't really come from the same place. <laughs> a lot of people do. I really am going, what's the best for this person? I pray about it before I do it. I mean, it isn't about the money. And, and so whatever, whatever, you know, occupation you have, you can take that spirit into that. There's supposed to be heaven on earth. So there's a lot of hell to go through before we get there. But there is supposed to yeah. be a space on earth it's really cool and that you know the lion lays down with it lamb that's the way it's supposed to be there's no violence there's no animals eating each other we're not eating the animals there's not that violent energy going on that would be the first yeah. step to stop the killing on this planet mm -hmm. and that's why we're not allowed in the universe 
and people go, oh, the universe told me, you know, and I, I have to say that because it's a California thing I just hate. <laughs> oh, the universe. They're so embarrassed yeah. to say God, like yeah. that's a swear word, like, you know, don't worry. Right. I don't oh, care that's... if I offend you. I mean, yeah. that's reality. If you don't like it, then, oh, well. But who created the universe? The universe is just a small. When you get cosmic, universes are little things. So you don't yeah. want to tap into the universe. You want to go to the almighty. I guess that maybe that's my greed. I want yeah. everything. <laughs> I want I it all. That. I love that you brought that up because I've noticed that about California, too. And it's interesting. Like, I mean, I could have a whole I could have a whole long conversation about this, that whole because like, you know, it's like a the word God <clears throat> means so many different things to different people. And, and, and it's like the same thing is like, we associate God with this idea of what God is. And it's like, it's like between like who I, it's like who I am is not my idea of who I am and who God is, is not an idea of what God is. You know, it's like, and it's like the distinction between the reality and the thought of was, is, I think that is, I mean, I could have a whole conversation about it's about the this. program. It's even the programming on that because the, the energy that's on the planet right now, that's trying to create this one world situation mm -hmm. is trying to eliminate family and faith and community. And it's, and so, and this has been going on a long time. It isn't just, you know, this year, this has been going on for decades. It's, it's the war between good and evil. And it's going to, it's landing on earth. Everybody's get to see it and you get to choose sides. And that's what's going on on earth right now is the war between good and evil. It isn't Republican and Democrat. It's good and evil and, and the right thing to do. Right. And, and, and starting with right nonviolence and how people are with each other. So it's a consciousness and, and that consciousness is open to everybody by pushing the right buttons, as you said, right? Making those right choices daily. And you can't do it by yourself. You need almighty. You need to plug into the electricity, not just have a little wire. Like, so that's the deal in California. You know, they're the beginning woo woo people. And that's why I used to commute to Nashville. Well, that's not why, but I was writing music out there. But what I liked about it was, I could just speak freely to people. And there was no, oh, if you say God or faith or something, they're like, oh, don't say that. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's a Bible. The whole belt, political correctness about God thing. more freely, right? But yeah, I, everybody I, I says talk to you about that. <laughs> God is, is, a, is just what they were taught. And none mm -hmm. of us have any idea of, of, you know, omnipresence, almighty, what that really means. So it's better to let all the, what you think, is going on go and i'm even what i think i'm letting a lot i don't know what the few i don't know how it's going to play out next year this year i mean you know i used to think i'm gonna this is gonna happen i don't know i'm in faith and that's the sweet spot faith faith is a sweet spot of, of trusting in the unseen knowing that when i take that step when i when you whatever it is you're starting a new business or you're going on a new whatever you're called to do you're taking a step in faith and trusting in the unseen and knowing that if you step off a cliff there's going to be a hand there and then everything good it will come to you and it's like a momentum it's like a rhythm and a song that you get into this pattern and the energy shifts and then everything good comes to you then the energy comes you actually think it and it manifests that's a little bit of we're supposed to be sons and daughters of God. That's a big deal. But mm -hmm. right now we've misused that. All of us have. That's why we're here in schoolroom earth. We're not all together here. <laughs> and those powers have been misused. Man has misused those gifts. So they're not living in their fullest potential. Yeah. I why. Oh, there's so many, there's so many things you said. I could, I, we, I feel like we could talk a long time. On I it. know, I know why. We could, <laughs> we'll continue the conversation. I, well, yeah, there's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely the theme of of what's happening for sure. Yeah, well, yeah. like kind of, but like what you're like saying, just in your personal story, you know, and I, and like I, I could relate with my story as a musician. Um, I had an identity of you know touring the country, touring Europe you know, playing festivals and I mean, it was like, it was hard work, but it was like, 
aren't I cool? You know, and it was like, yeah. and, I've, and, I, and I've had amazing times with my with my band and playing, you know, all over the world. And it, but it was, I was doing it to survive and to be enough in some twisted way. Like right. maybe if I, and it was like, it was a pursuit of freedom. It was a pursuit of so, something, but it was it's just uh, it's side. Uh, it's right. It, it was, but it was like a. It worked when it worked, but it didn't work. It was like a it was right when it was, it was like a broken clock. And it was like, after doing it for 12 years, there's like an existential inquiry kind of came in my space. It's like, well, like, why am I playing? Who am I? Why am I? Why, why am I? And why bother? And it was like yes. this yeah. shift from, it's about me to like, what, what can I, like what seeds of joy and love and laughter and wonder can I plant today for every person on this planet or for anyone who, who hears my song, what, like, it's just seeing, flipping the script. Flipping the and script. Exactly. And that's exactly what happened to me in the music thing. Like when I was in Hollywood and they had the mansion and, you know, we were on, you know, all these TV and radio, it was like hitting a ceiling. Cause you're like, <gasps> you know, when you're live and then you go home alone into your little room and, you know, yeah, you know, shoot yeah. up or do some drugs or something to try to stay up at that level. That was the same thing that happened when I went to Nashville was when yeah. I was given my voice back and, oh, I had a number one song. Whoopee. Like, right. it's not about me. It's, it's not, that's not the end all be all. It was a great journey, but it, it's not enough. It's not enough for right. me to just write a song, sing a song. It's like, let's. Because of the times, you guys, it's late. We're right at World War III. We're going to, you know, there's going to be a lot of trials and tribulations. It's late. It's like wake up time. It isn't la, 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 and sleep, walk off the cliff. You know, if you want to be right-minded, you want to be paying attention because if the spirit says turn right, you want to go right unless you go left and get go off the cliff. This is serious times. It isn't, and, and, I, and I say that, in love, but with push, you know, like kind of wake up, you know, it, it, it we're really there. And I said it randomly before. Now I'm like hitting myself. You know, I just thought, oh yeah, we're in the last days. And oh man, it's so much later than I thought. I mean, really, like, well, yeah, yeah. But now I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really happening. You know, and I look yeah. behind the scenes. I'm not watching what you guys, pe most people watch cable TV and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff when you dig deep in the here. There's a lot of stuff people don't even know what's going on. Why? Because now the way that they've shifted the, and it's all planned. Now everybody's just like, you can't, you know, pay your gas and your food and, you know, everything. Keep you all busy so you don't really know what's going on over here. That's the plan. That's the plan. Keep you all caught up in the day to day and struggling for your food and your money. And that's the plan. So you don't see that the shift's happening and there's a going to choice. Everybody's going to have a choice here. What button you're going to push. Like you said there, Abraham, mm -hmm. it's the choice that we got. I think, I think that's a big part of it in, you know, the, the, the figurative hill for, for humanity is discovering we do have a choice. That's I right. feel like a lot of the time, you know, in my deepest suffering and, you know, in the depths of my own pain, you know, my world was, I don't have a choice. And this is just the way world, this is the way I am. And this is the way the world is. And I think this is the a unique power of art, of human connection, of, of sharing vulnerably uh, that, you know, break us out of the, the sleepwalking that, we don't even realize we're born into. It's like looking, you know, for me, it was a Bob Dylan poem. Um, you know, I read in college, you know, up to that point, you know, I saw myself and the world is through this little keyhole. Hey, and this is the world. And it's like, like, you know, the, I, I, I saw the world through the frame and the filter based on the meaning I gave to everything and every circumstance that happened to me. And I read this Bob Dylan poem and it just rocked my world. It was like, I didn't even know words could make me feel that way. I didn't know, like, it's like there's something way bigger than my comprehension and my limited mind can understand and even the, the grasp in the totality of all that is in this vast universe. And it's like, and it just cracked open the door. It's like, all I know is there's something I can't explain bigger than me. So I'm going to look and challenge myself on my own, you know, and it was like, 
that's how my journey began. And I think there's a saying I, I've been saying a lot is caterpillars don't, much as you, we tell the caterpillars, they you know, like, poke, hey, you, you got to change. You got to stop being angry. You got to stop being resentful. You know, the, 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 most of the time caterpillars are like, Okay, Monday will stay. Like they'll, they'll say they don't like. What do you like? What what do I do with that information? And it's like I think that's the power of people like you sharing your your story, your testimony of what you faced, the deepest deepest darkest depths, and what you've created in the face of that, and how you always had that power, and but you it, it was the barriers that led to your falling falling down and being homeless and being in jail, and but then your power that you discovered you know, in God and in, in, in serving others and loving your neighbor. And I think that's where our fulfillment that it gets, it, that's where fulfillment comes is what, where we see what we have that can actually serve and lift others up and, and you sharing your story and you just doing what you do and being who you're being is like, I think you're inviting people to, yeah. to wake up. Yeah. Amen. For sure. And there's some cool things that people can do you know, if you're confused or you don't know there's a God or, you know, you're just like, whatever your consciousness is about it, it really does work when, you know, you ask and you'll receive. And that's what I did. But every time I hit the ground, I didn't know there was God. I was like, my first prayer before I was going to go commit suicide or go to South America was I was sitting on the side of the road and I literally said, if there's a God, please show me a sign. And that's when this old horse trailer pulled up and this guy goes, are you looking for Jesus Christ camp? And he took me out in, in the middle of the desert. And there were these, these brothers sitting around. They look like Jesus with white robes and beards and living like nomads, you know, Yeah. with a bear walking barefoot across America, seriously, literally that way, you know, for deck, you know, for more than a decade. Yeah. And, the point is when you ask you receive and and i'm you know daily like you know i'm not really sure you know you just and and show me and just show me and you ask and you'll you'll get guidance because you really need to be plugged into almighty god right now because I, you know when things come down or you know maybe there's no more internet or you know we have an emt or this happens or that or food short whatever it is you want to know what you want to be tuned in to the spirit. That's the point. That's the biggest value here. Yeah, I can show you about healthy money, but I can also show you about, point you to, not that I'm the guru, but I can point you to the guru, the healthy spirit guru that can tune yeah. in for your journey because it's different than mine, but there's similarities that we can all use. And that is ask and you'll receive. Say a little prayer. Say, hey, show me, should I do this? Is this really what I should be doing right now? Right. Or, or even, even if it's, even if it's just a nothing where you just say, are you there? <laughs> right. Are you there? Are you really, are you really real? Just say a little I, thing. Watch what happens. And, I, and you I know, and, and send a note back to, to our good host here and, and share, share your experiences. <laughs> Cause I bet you you'll kind of get mind blown when you really do it right. Not like a yeah. joke, but. I, sure. I love, so some of my favorite people to talk to are people who call themselves atheists and it's, it's not because I've been there, but one thing I've experienced in my life, because I've, I've been skeptical of my skepticism and, you know, I, I see, I see both sides of both extremes are as much as like, I think science proves, proves every, it proves spiritual truths. And I think spiritual truths are, they're, they're not two different stories, but one thing I'll say that I've, for everything you just shared about, you know, when you look for God, you'll see him everywhere. That's when you look for the, when you look for, there's no God, you won't see God right in front of your face. And it's like right. a lot of people. And, and again, I, I love talking to people. I mean, people I grew up around in California about God, about spirituality is a lot of the time we have different words. We all associate meaning to different words. So it's like, we hear them dip. We it's like so when I'll talk to people, it's like some people ask me like, or you ask like, well, the question is, do you believe in God? And a lot of time, like an atheist will ask like, do you believe in God? And I'll say, well, like, what do you mean by believe? What do you mean by God? And what makes you think that we both have the same? You know, we're pointing to the same thing with those words. And it's like the words we use 
are always a signpost to point to what it, like the truth that they're entailing. But it's here's I mean, a little I, I, here's a little trick. Yeah, in, in those two words, um, spell spell good with one o. <laughs> right, that that's from Amen. The Amen, and yeah. here's an and here's another one from the Amen, which is believe right do you believe believe be and live in mm. right so there's a lot of people that say they're believers right but they're not being and living in and i'll tell you straight out when we knocked on those churches they were the worst they threw us yeah. out they called the police on us we were county lined across the country sometimes they'd call the cops and they'd throw us in a car and they'd get us out of the state because we were so weird. Imagine in the seventies, these people walking around like Jesus. I'm telling you, it was radical. I don't even think you were yeah. born yet. <laughs> you were <laughs> no, just not, born. Not yet. I was born in the eighties. <laughs> but, but, but I mean, seriously, it, it was radical. And we were thrown in jails for walking in a park barefoot or being out at, you know, whatever they'd make up because we were so weird, you know, and what were we saying? No killing. And we were, we were celibate. We were living as brothers and sisters. We took everything off the plate to go inside. It was like going to the Himalayas, right, in U.S. Mm. Inside, going on inside. Just cut everything off for a little bit. Find out who you are. Yeah. Cut off working for money, striving. Now, we worked. We'd go into a town. And people say, hey, uh, can you help us? You know, we'd help people, you know, along the way. But that consciousness it propels you into a different place. You know, yeah. start with no killing. Yeah. Start with giving life. When you give life, you receive life. It does affect what you eat. Now, that's, yeah. you know, at, in, the, in the garden, there was no killing. All herb bearing seeds, all the things that came from the ground. That's the highest, that's the highest consciousness nonviolence when you don't kill to eat. Mm. It's not, it, they're screwing it all up with the, global warming in the you know do it to for the you know the cows put smog out or whatever but it's the act of violence that is why you do it it is the healthiest way but that's not the number of reason you do it for nonviolence and when you do it it changes your frequency it changes yeah. your brain it opens you up because you're not channeling that negative carnal blood letting way that the fallen world lives the in the garden there's no killing the lion will lay down on the lamb and everybody right. eats the things that come from the ground and everybody's happy and you know and the animals around me are they become my friends you know they right. can sense it you know yeah. well, they all come up to you i had a little wild bunny that just you know lived here and just let it you know this just you could they can feel the peace that's something that right. everybody can do and start. Absolutely. And I, and I mean, there's, again, I, I feel like we could have like 14 side conversations on about every, right. down every, all of the, each and all of these rabbit holes, you know, and right. what, like, but what oh, I jewel. was saying earlier. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Just putting jewels along the way. Right? Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. Exactly. And, but like what you were just saying about, you know, a few things, but like when I, what I was talking about with like people, who are afraid of words or you know it's like we are all people who are afraid of words like god or afraid of words like or will ask like i'll say who ask if you believe in god and it's like a lot of people have a certain like they'll say belief is like they'll treat it like a checklist like i believe this and then they'll just like one and done like check that's i'm done and it's like but in like in an eastern way of belief meant what you do, what you practice. And it's like a lot, and it's some people, there are different ways to like, there's different ways to see and discover, you know, who we are. We're all on our journey. We all have our rises and our falls, our successes, our failures. And I think our failure are, is our biggest teacher. And I feel like as humans, you know, back to like the, the button and, you know, Adam and Eve, but I feel like we're born you know, I feel like as humans in this life, we're born sitting down, but we have to fall flat on our face with our face in the mud to really be able to stand up because it's like, we don't, we have everything we need when we're born, but the journey is what allows us to actually 
see what we are, we can be grateful for and see like we, we need to see what we can lose to see what we can actually create and i think that's that that's what i see through all these stories like yours and people from all over the place who have you know who use different words to describe the same thing and they'll, they'll you know that we're all spiritual beings um and many people make it about them being right about their spirituality and others being wrong and i what i and it's like and what I hear when you're doing is like, you you let you truly are loving your neighbor, and you and and love confronts dysfunction. It, it 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 love is what you're giving. You're you're giving. You're serving others, and you're not like you're not giving space for them to see who they're not, or you know, and you're giving space for who they are, and you're loving them for who they are. And I think that's the space yeah. that we can give everybody. You know, and there no really is, amen. There's really one place for us to be together i mean we're supposed to be a community we are all one family and there really is one father and one mother and for all of us you know we're yes. we're really family and if we looked at each other as brothers and sisters then we would treat each other different not what your flesh looks like not how you were born or what you do but there is a lifestyle that the spirit lives on earth that's the same and it's the same it all over, you know, you can see it through history, but you know, there's not going to, you're not going to let, you know, there's not going to be any violence. You just think of the garden of Eden. There's no violence there. Everything lives at peace. So there's a way of being how we're supposed to be on earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that is, there's, there's not two ways to do that. You can't have two people. One guy says, you know, peace. And the other guy wants war. Mm -mm. No, that war thing's going to go, it's, it's on its grand finale here. Everybody's going to see it's the war between good and evil. And they're going to see what evil's going to come to fruition. And we're going to see how horrible it really is and what it does to people. Because people, some people haven't made their choice yet. A lot of people have, some haven't. It's a soul thing. It's an inside thing. It's really almost the key to the universe because the, the, you know, Almighty doesn't want a bunch of jerks to kill each other out in the universe. Forget it. You guys just stay on Earth, you know, go through some lifetime experiences. And, you know, if you can be nice, you get to go into the next zone, you know, into light, who you really are. But if you can be nice, forget it. You know, bad seed, yeah. call it. I, compost, yeah. right? Compost sure. it. Because there's not, it isn't. You're, you know, oh, you're more, you did all this in the world and you gave all these tithes and you're, you have a big church. That doesn't mean you're going to get, be the right, in the right space. It really is a consciousness. It's a Christ consciousness, the way to be on earth with every living thing. And it's the same for all of us. Yet yeah, you said, you know, they use a different world on the word in the other side of the planet. But when you come together, it, it's, there's, you know, union. And I've traveled all over the world in yeah. that conversation and meet with family all over the place. And you just meet like you've known each other forever, right? That's reality. That's really where we're supposed to be at. Yeah, we're all we're all on our journey. And, and, and again, it's when we discover along our path that we do have a choice. And I think right. it's the illusion that uh, it eludes us from actually seeing that that I don't have a choice and it's right. like, or you're a victim. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I've, 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 I've played that fiddle for a long time of being a me victim. Too. And, you know, it's poor me and it's, you know, yeah. it's just the way the world is. And I think this is the opportunity on the other side of off school when we're willing to, to look at them, right. We're willing to see them. And, you know, it's again, I just thank you again, Chris, just so as we, I want to ask you one really quick question before we, sure, before we close, sure. but I just want to first just acknowledge you and thank you for sharing your story and your, your just transformation of, you know, and being on the other side of it, looking back and being able to lift others up and to empower others to rise and to wrap their gifts and present them to the world. And, you know, it's an honor. You know, this is, it's, yes. uh, thank you. You know, and this is a continual like in everyone's journey, someone's far along. Some people are, we're all somewhere, but we're all we're getting somewhere. to where we're going. Right. You're all getting, we're all either running to or from, you know, the <laughs> lessons that are there. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's the opportunity. And we know we're holding this space 
for the people that are looking for, you know, for that wisdom on the other side of what they're dealing with to see beyond, you know, their pain and their suffering. Cause there is, there is something they have that can actually empower others just like you're, you've done and you're, you're doing right now. But I, so my question, I like, we'd like to ask inquiries is, you know, okay. I feel like the, the, the answers are usually not in the answers themselves actually in the question, but you know, I just want to ask you, Chris, like now in your life, what do you see your highest aim being? Like, what is your highest aim? Well, you know, it, it's the responsibility. It, dry, it almost drives me a little crazy. The amount of responsibility that I feel knowing what I know, I can't just go sit on an island somewhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> I feel such a responsibility to give back. So this next you know, shift part of my life is a full on give back is taking all the information I have from, you know, the spirit and, and my business and the music and everything and, and creating a living legacy to show people how to walk that walk and how to do it inside of what we're going through right now in the times that we're in, not some distant thing that you, you have to go on the Himalayan mountains or, you know, and you may not be able to take that journey that I did and leave everything and walk barefoot across America. You may not be able to do that journey, but you can do it on the inside and there's ways mm -hmm. to do that. So I'm, I'm getting ready to broadcast, <laughs> you know, just getting ready Exciting. to just keep, keep, you know, sharing this information and, and um, combining with like-minded folks and, you know, making the change that we want to be in the world. Beautifully said, and I, I love it. And it's, thank you, thank you. I love your 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 commitment to contributing and to serving others with with your gifts, and you know, from all you've learned. Such and a joy, such an, yeah. An honor and just a, such a privilege and pleasure yeah. to have you. Thank um, you. And I want to real quick. I'm going to check in with the audience, um, and just you know, for those of you watching, thank you for being with us, and thank you for. For joining for joining us and for you know giving us your attention and your heart and maybe you saw something for yourself in your life but i want to invite you you know i would assert you have a gift i've said this before and i'll say it again you have unique gifts and we want maybe we're selfish but we want to share your gifts with with our with our audience with our platform so i want to invite you to, to join us on the stage and all you got to do is go to the link in the bottom of the screen one day mvmt.org slash share my gift and you guessed it, this is that platform to share your gift. And, you know, we, I know you have, whether it's your song, your poem, your, your practice, your business, your, you know, whatever you've gone through and overcome, whatever you're dealing with, we want to share with you, share with the world, your gifts and what you have uniquely, only you have to offer. And, you know, that's part of our one day mission is bringing you and me and communities together in joyous celebration, unifying humanity in our diversity to create a better world for us all. And this is all part of our one day vision, which is, you know, humanity is rising in a connected world with each person's unique gifts, you know, genius and contributions are being valued and magnified through a higher level of collaboration, producing unprecedented new realms of possibility. Thank you yeah. all for watching. All Thank right. you for being with us. Thank you again, Chris. And I'll see you all next week. And as always, one day is today. Peace, everybody. All right. Thank you. <laughs>